All right, now, everybody. Quiet, listen to me. We're going to start a show. Now, some of you people have been with me before. You know it's going to be a tough grind. But we're going to have a show. And hello, all. Thank you for being here. How about it for our Friday show? Wow, that's a loud audience. I love a loud audience. Albert is here. Albert, thank and you. Kim is Kim, here. Are you? Albert, did you tweet this morning? I did tweet this morning. Wow, that's extraordinary. <laughs> the bar has been set for Friday. Yeah. Yes, you really, really hit the hit the ball. Very impressive. Well, we've got a lot going on on this Friday, I'll tell you that. I have a law and disorder that is all about corruption. And it's corruption at City Hall in San Francisco. And also corruption at City Hall in Los Angeles. What? Yeah, all of California is being covered by grift and corruption. So I will share that with you. Uh, news from the Native American community today. What? Also, the politics of Donald Trump and the strong man that has come out and, frankly, flexed a muscle that the GOP is responding to. Michael Shore will be here with that. Friday Fabulous Florida, I peaked, and it's really good, man. I'm excited about that coming up. And then I've got, of course, the um, magic of Michael Snyder, the culture blaster. He's got a bunch of movies, some TV shows also that are streaming. Who knows what he's going to say? He's a loose cannon, that culture blaster. Yeah. Corruption in California? Say it ain't so, Beth Farmer says. Uh, I think it's beyond that. There's craziness of all kinds in California. You know, those of us who live in California and those of us who look at California from elsewhere, if you don't live in California, you may say, it's the Democrats, it's the liberals, it's the progress, whatever. Uh, I don't think so. I think it's kind of the way the administrative bureaucracy has handled a lot of things, and certainly there have been bad decisions made. I mean, really bad decisions made. I, you can look at the... Uh, the way the electric grid is being handled and how we're trying to sort of catch up environmentally at the same time we are also uh, bowing to special interests. You look at the PG&E rate hikes, you look at, you know, there are a lot of things you can, but I'd suggest to you, okay, vote GOP in. How are those states working out? They're a, an absolute meltdown. So, Please don't misunderstand me. I'm not happy with everything in California, but I, I don't think it's a party-specific problem. That's uh, kind of what I'm saying. So uh, anyway, that's a, just a... I wasn't planning on speaking about that, but just because it comes up, it's uh, something I mentioned. The Mark Thompson Show. I do want to acknowledge that the Niners play this weekend. And as the commissioner of sports on the show... Albert is required to weigh in. Yeah. Coach, what are you saying? Commission, what do you think? I mean, it's possible the Niners could lose to the Detroit Lions, couldn't they, Albert? Also possible they could win. Uh, they have a lot of experience. <laughs> I like to look at the glass half empty, as you are well aware. Right. I, I think it's a defense mechanism for me to think half glass full. I'm just so scarred by every year of just multiple teams letting me down. But uh, I th it's 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 actually looking really good. It's kind of too good to be true. When I yeah. saw the Lions were going to play the Buccaneers as our opponents, like one of those two, I was like, wow, this is great. But the Lions re really good. They're 12 and five in the regular season. Good run game, okay pass game. So if we could stop the run, it'll be it should be easy. Should be easy. So the big thing is to stop the run. I have my Purdy jersey on today, says uh, Hall of Famer Gail Guthrie. I'll take the Lions in seven, says Harry Magnin. It is a seven-point spread, and the spread means that those people who wager are either getting seven, if they're taking the Lions, as Harry is, or they're laying seven, as they say. You're giving seven points. It means you start the game, it's already 7 nothing against you. 
if you take the Niners. So it means the Niners have to win by eight or more. Seems like a lot of points, Albert. But on the other hand, you know, once the Niners shut down the running game of the Lions, as you suggested they have to, then they might be able to get that eight or more in a victory. They could win by 10, don't you think? Oh, yeah, for sure. But that's a, stopping the run is a huge issue. It's been um, the last few weeks for the Niners that haven't been good. And uh, we're known for just rushing four in the pass rush also, and we haven't really been getting to the quarterback. And we paid Bosa a lot of money to get to the quarterback. I don't see him getting to the quarterback, Mark. Oh, so. Look at that. Some, uh, shall we say, uh, love uh, or constructive criticism, I'll call it, for uh, for. I mean, Bosa. as long as he starts doing it now, you know, I'll, I'll forgive him because okay. this, these are more important games. But uh, if, if he yeah. can get to the quarterback, that'll help our secondary and so on and so on. And then I think our offense should be good with with Debo back and even game planning without him. I think last week we were game planning to have Debo and then we lost him in the very beginning. And right. we were kind of on our back foot there just trying to decide what we were going to do without one of our better players. So is the, the game commissioner in, uh, is getting or? called out. Oh no, it's it's in San Francisco. Okay, or it's in uh, Santa Clara. It's in, it's in, yeah, it's in, it's in it's it's on the West Coast. It's, I was just yeah, Santa Clara. reading a uh, <laughs> reading a story on on Cron. They quote Seat Geek as saying the cheapest tickets for this game three hundred eighty two dollars before fees. That's a lot to go to a game, but I guess that's probably like five hundred dollars with the fees. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The, the, <laughs> yeah, I'm total. sure that sounds yeah. lowball to me, actually. What? Yeah, I'm mean, just saying that as Albert says, they get you on the fees and the transaction fees. It's all crap. Well, you're probably sitting way far away, too. Right. Yeah. Right. It's a it's a scam, the ticket thing. It's really... Oh, and for there, sure, yeah. Yeah, and there are there's legislative moves to actually get a hold of that. You and Vilma should do a show together, maybe like a podcast. Vilma agrees with you. Vilma says, if we can stop the run, then we win. The problem is we've been very bad at stopping the run. Yeah, yeah. even the guy we, we traded for a top two overall pick chase young from the commanders and they just run it on him if you watch it he's number 92 they will pick his side and run on him the whole game so we got to fix that the uh that's cheap for playoff tickets says harry plus parking says fs tesla that's more than 150 dollars <laughs> for parking yeah this is expensive. congratulations to the lions just for being in the game, says Chris. Oh, that's a I very mean, that's nice... What their, uh, that's what their advantage is, right? They're playing with house money. They have nothing to lose. A lot more yeah. pressure on the Niners to really win because our window has been open, our championship window. Their window is just opening, so it's, yeah, it's, it's true. really exciting. Last time they were in the playoffs was when I was born. So, this Wow, is, how that about a, that? Yeah. Another life landmark for... Producer Albert, the commissioner. Go Niners, says D. And um, I wish the Niners a best of luck. I think these playoff games have been great. In the AFC yeah, the side. the other side, we have Kansas yeah. City and Baltimore. That's right. going to be a very fun matchup. Very, very fun. Who are you we'll picking in that one, commissioner? Taylor Swift. Yeah, we need Taylor Swift in the we need Taylor Swift in the Super Bowl. I'm, I want our revenge. I think Kyle now, Shanahan wants his revenge against the Chiefs. Commish, uh Taylor Swift was not at is not going to be at this game, right? She, I, don't I think, think she's in I Asia think or something. Isn't that Asia. right, Kim? Mm -hmm. Kim, you're a girl. Where's Taylor Swift going to be? <laughs> oh, look it up. Uh, what? Yeah. I believe she's in Asia, in Asia, and she'll be in Japan, I think, around during Super Bowl time. So, Kim, can you give us an update on the Taylor Taylor Swift Travis yeah. Kelsey yeah. situation? Now, use the private jet right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, she was at the last game. People are right. saying every time she comes to a Kansas City game, they win. So they all kind of want her there. Right, There's but she's not going to be this time. Is no, my point? No, no. Um, they they're asking people Swifties are now asking her to come to Baltimore this weekend to watch her boyfriend. But yeah, no. she she not she's not going to come. Uh, she will be in Japan fun. from February 7th through the 10th in different city or same cities just a, a four day four That's days. exciting. Gosh, Harvard what a life. Before. Yeah. And the she's Super Bowl is thing, on huh? February 11th. So mm. 
whatever well, she wears to a football game, like all of a sudden, that's the thing everybody has to have. <laughs> it is true. Yeah. Yeah. And she is a like Kyle Usechek. His wife designed one of right. the jackets yeah. for yeah. Taylor. Swift. We had that story on this show. Yeah. That's right. Uh, well, it's exciting. Obviously, we're homers. We hope for the Niners, but I know also that there's some Michiganders here and Detroit people and. You know, you've been long suffering, so I always have a place in my heart for a fan base that's been long suffering. So, uh, you know, hey, if you can do it, then just do us a favor: don't take out our quarterback. <laughs> that, uh, let us just fin- let Purdy. He maybe he has a bad game, but let him finish the game. I hate that thing where you know all of our players get knocked out. You know. Yeah, last year was very unfortunate. We were playing some random people. Both of our quarterbacks were injured last, last year. Yeah, it was year. just brutal. Hey, so, Albert, uh, last thing, if you would, from the commissioner's office, you've got to pick a winner in the AFC contest, please. So it's the Ravens and the Chiefs. We know now Taylor Swift will not be at the park. They are playing in Baltimore. Please pick a winner, sir. Ravens scare me. I'm going with the Chiefs because I'm scared. So the Chiefs, I think Mahomes, <laughs> this, will solidify, this will solidify Mahomes' legacy as a – He doesn't have a great team, but you'll still win, kind of like Tom Brady. Wow. And if you're betting, you're getting points in that uh, Yeah, Mahomes as an underdog seems like easy money to me, Mark. That's uh, very easy money. All right. That's the word from the commissioner's office. Well done. The Mark Thompson Show. I'd like to get into some news. I'll put the politics aside. We'll talk Trump. We'll talk strongman. We'll talk GOP and the absolute caving that they're doing to Trump demands at the border. All of that I'll put aside until Michael Shore joins. That'll be the beginning of the second hour. But I'd like to immediately get into corruption and big stories when it comes to the law. This is Law and Disorder. In the criminal justice system, the people... Pimps, addicts, thieves, bums, winos, girls who can't keep an address, and men who don't care... ...are represented by two separate yet equally important groups. A cop, a flatfoot, a bull, a dick, John Law, you're the fuzz, the heat, you're poison, you're trouble, you're bad news. These are their stories. The former L.A. Councilman Jose Guizar sentenced to 13 years in prison in his corruption case. The role he had was a significant one. It was a set of criminal schemes that had cash payouts, casino chips at Vegas hotels, other bribes. These are all bribes from developers that were trying to get the deal to build these high rises in downtown Los Angeles. So this sentence, which is brutal, 13 years, was handed down by U.S. District Court Judge John F. Walter. And this is a day after getting a letter from Weizar apologizing to his family, his former constituents, and the city of Los Angeles. He said in that letter that he'd paid a huge price. He'd lost his reputation, his ability to provide for his family, harming his children's future and their mental health. My whole life has been turned upside down, is the quote. And continuing with the quote, I regret ever having departed from the values that brought me to public service in the first place. Yeah, but you couldn't even see public service from where you were. No. I mean, you were, this is insane what they did with this guy. Uh, He has to surrender, by the way, to the feds on April 30th. So those uh, are the remaining months ahead of his freedom. Uh, He pleaded guilty to racketeering, tax evasion as well. And he says he had a weakness for the shiny things that were dangled in front of him. I could not resist temptation. The money, the fancy dinners, luxury flights, it was there for the taking, and I was not strong enough to say no, he says. He'd asked for no more than nine years in prison. Federal prosecutors have been seeking 13 years, arguing that a strong sentence will serve as a deterrent against future public corruption. He monetized government position... <clears throat> Excuse me. He monetized um, a government position for years, as you know. I mean, you can uh, uh, those who have been following this, and as you've just heard, he had more than a million and a half in these 
cash bribes, gambling chip, chips, these luxury hotel stays. So you, you see that essentially these luxury vacations and all these other things were provided for him by developers in exchange for the green light on projects. And uh, he's been ordered to pay $440,000 in restitution to the city of Los Angeles and nearly 39000 to the IRS. By the way, restitution is a ding word. Um, this was a huge uh, investigation that was led by the FBI. It goes all the way back to 2015. And um, it's a... Uh, it's something that was brought to the FBI by uh, a tip from uh, something related to gambling activities that Weezar was involved in in Las Vegas. So um, Weezar and other city hall figures were involved in this, and this is a, a you know, it's a little like Menendez because there were in the details of this um, cash that was passed to Weezar in a casino bathroom. Lots there of were you see? Yeah. No gold bars though, huh? One of his former aides transported liquor boxes full of cash. Ooh, that's mobsterish, right? Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. It's uh it's very it's got <laughs> It's very Joe Box. Joe Box and Little Anthony. It is Joe Box and Little Anthony for sure. And, uh, of course... Um, Joe Fish, Sal the Shoemaker. Yeah, Joe Box and Little Anthony. I wonder if they had code names for each other. I don't know. Um, there was a Chinese billionaire involved in this. He may never face charges because he's in China. And, um, anyway, it's... Uh, it's it's all pretty it's pretty out there. So uh Mo Black's brother, Fat Andy. Fat Andy has not been mentioned in anything, but I'm 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 guessing we are uh we're fat Andy adjacent, is my sense of it. Meantime, don't forget San Francisco. We can play corruption in San Francisco with the best of them. City employee accused of buying VR, that's virtual reality for those of you who are the older boys and girls who aren't hip to the street. VR headsets purchased and also cameras there's nothing wrong with buying vr headsets and cameras what could possibly be wrong oh it was purchased with city money everybody of course what? look to be fair why use your money when you can use city money am i right people yeah, yeah. all right this is actually somebody who works in san francisco lives in oakland and has essentially Managed the city's Department of Human Resources. Stanley Ellicott is his name. He has been charged with felony misappropriation of public funds and felony receipt of stolen property. It's not done. Along with aiding and abetting the San Francisco District Attorney, uh, aiding and abetting is a separate charge. So he's helping it along as well as leading the charge for misappropriation of public funds. He's the third city employee, all Oakland residents, to face charges in this growing misconduct scandal tied to the city's Community Challenge Grant Program. The city grant program director, Lenita Enriquez, and a consultant, Rudolph Dwayne Jones, both charged with 59 counts, ranging from bribery and misappropriation of public money to financial conflict of interest. Some of those charges accused the two of pilfering thousands of dollars from the city from 2016 to 2020 through checks written between the two of them. More charges claim that Hernandez helped steer nearly two dozen city and county contracts worth $1.4 million to entities connected to Jones. So there you go. They have, I mean, it's a pretty sweet deal if you don't get caught. Uh-oh. Yeah, this consultant, as I mentioned, Dwayne, Rudolph Dwayne Jones... By the way, when they use your middle name, you know you've been uh, accused of something, at least, most likely. Uh, you know, these checks written to his company, were it was a way to sort of cover the fact that there was corruption going on. And Ellicott, who I'll remind you is running the whole thing, 38 years old, played a key role in this whole scheme, apparently, according to prosecutors, often by helping Enriquez and Jones funnel money 
out-of-city grant programs. The HR manager is accused of pocketing $269,876. So, I mean, you know, that's not nothing, right? And then sending $65,650 back to Hernandez. There's a whole That doesn't scheme. even sound worth it. I mean, that's not even a house in San Francisco. You're, yeah. <laughs> you're breaking the law for chump change. What are you guys doing? <clears throat> well, ain't it the truth, man? You know? But uh, this is it. New uh, accusations, new profiting off of city programs, and new corruption in the city of San Francisco and in Los Angeles. They are charging, as I say, on that corruption. 13 years is what Weezar got down in L.A. Now, to Native Americans. Leading museums are removing Native displays. There are new federal rules, as you may be aware, and the American Museum of Natural History is closing two major halls as museums around the country are getting hip to these new policies from the Biden administration. The policies are essentially this. You have to get consent from the tribes before displaying or even performing research on cultural items related to the tribes. I mean, this is... You can call it wokeness, but I would call it, uh, maybe you can call it, they're awake to the fact that these are, there are real people here. There's a real yeah. culture here. There's a, you know, you, you can't just take everything, slap good lighting on it, put it in a cabinet, and then, you know, uh, have a museum exhibit. You could before. Now we've realized that these artifacts represent a tie to a real people, and in a sense, that era of doing that stuff is just over. That's all. So indigenous peoples are really getting a place at the table that they didn't have before. Anyway, the museum is closing. This is the Natural History Museum. Closing galleries dedicated to the eastern woodlands and Great Plains, covering a number of other displays as well, featuring Native American cultural items. It goes through enormous uh, work to review the collection. It's making sure it's in compliance with the new rules which took effect this month. Museums around the country have been covering up displays. Curators are scrambling to determine whether they can be shown under these new regulations. The Field Museum in Chicago covered some of the display cases. The Peabody Museum of Archaeology and Ethnology at Harvard said that it would remove all funerary belongings from its exhibition. And the Cleveland Museum of Art has covered up some of its cases. And funerary is a ding word. And so things change. The American Museum of Natural History in New York gets four and a half million visitors a year. So this is a huge museum. And this is a powerful message to other museums, you know, when a museum that big makes a decision like that. That is Law and Disorder for today. Tune in again next time for more Law and Disorder on The Mark Thompson Show. All right, that's it. Let's roll. Hey, let's be careful out there. I have Kim's News, then Friday Fabulous Florida, which does include Disney. I mean, and it includes, if I can say, something weird that happened in relation to Disney, and then there's double weirdness. You'll understand what I mean when we get into what? this. Yeah, double weirdness awaits you. Smash the like button like Smash a boss. It with your iron rod. Kim's here. I mean, it's hard. Kim does all these shows. She still shows up on time. Kim, how are you? Works hard behind the scenes. Albert is here. Albert, thank you. He doesn't work hard particularly, but he is here. <laughs> he tweeted. He did tweet, which is I mean, good. I I've got to retweet. Yes, what thank you. What more do you want from the guy? Come yeah. on. Okay. <laughs> well, well uh, actually a lot. But and I want all to right. apologize um, to the Asian community, the Asian American community. There is a uh, an apology short up right now on our channel, which you can share if people want to get the vibe of uh, how we extracted an apology from oh. Albert. So that is in the as I say, in the shorts on our channel. All right, Kim's News and Florida next. Mark Thompson. The Mark Thompson Show.
on the Mark Thompson Show. I'm Kim McAllister, and this report is sponsored by Tenuta Vineyards in Woo-hoo. Livermore. Ooh, yeah. It is, uh, changing my voice to a little more somber and a little less woohoo, Holocaust Remembrance Day. It is tomorrow. Officials say the number of Holocaust survivors is down to 245,000 who live in more than 90 countries. Half of them live in Israel. In addition, just over 14,600 survivors live in New York. It is the most of any state in the United States. So again, the Holocaust Remembrance Day is tomorrow. At the University of California, faculty and other staff could be banned from publishing any political statements, especially those stemming from the Israel-Hamas conflict on university websites, university channels, this all under a policy that UC's Board of Regents could be considering very soon. Uh, This policy the consideration of it comes after some uh, units uh, in the in the classes, including at least two ethnic studies departments, posted statements on their websites last fall supporting Palestine and condemning Israel. That caused an outroar among faculty members. Some of them say this will repress their academic freedom. Um, they wonder how this is going to be enforced. Uh, UC officials say. They think it's necessary to ensure the opinions of certain individuals or groups or of faculty are not mistaken for the opinions of the University of California. The problem with this situation is that it's not that criticism of Israel is necessarily anti-Semitic. There's nothing intrinsic to criticizing Israel that's anti-Semitic. But criticism of Israel is used by anti-Semites of which there are many. I mean, there it's sick how the Jew hating comes out all over the world. It's used as a proxy for their anti-Semitism. And so you end up in this place where you can't distinguish those who are just being Jew haters from those who are just criticizing Israeli policy. And there's certainly plenty of Israeli policy to criticize. So I get the sensitivities. It's once again something I don't know how you policy wonk your way out of this from a university standpoint from a free speech standpoint i don't know but that i think essentially is the predicament they're in i guess you just blanket statement no political you know commentary on university websites which is yeah i mean that's clearly what they're doing so Yeah. yeah uh this is happening today former president uh, jury deliberations are underway in the penalty phase of former President Trump's civil defamation trial. Trump walked out of the courtroom earlier as writer E. Jean Carroll's lawyer started speaking. Then he did return for his lawyer's closing arguments, a jury weighing potential damages after Trump was found liable for sexually abusing and defaming Carroll. A potential federal uh, standoff and a different story is brewing between Texas and the White House over the use of this razor wire. This is going on at the uh, the border. Texas National Guard adding more fencing now along the Rio Grande section of the U.S.-Mexico border. This after the Supreme Court sided with the Biden administration that Texas had overstepped its authority and agreed that federal agents can cut it down. Now they're putting more up. So, wow, crazy. The well, National- the real craziness down there, I'll talk to Michael Shore about this, is the way that the the Texas governor has essentially seized control of the border from the federal government, which is absolutely illegal. And so I'll talk to Shore about this more, but that's, you know, that sets an awful precedent. I mean, this is a federal jurisdiction and the governor in Texas has taken it away from the feds. Again, I'll talk to Shore about it, but that's yet another aspect of this whole thing going on in Texas at the border. Home prices. The National Association of Realtors say it say pending home sales surged 8.3 percent in December. So homes are expensive, but somebody's out there buying them. The group's chief economist predicts falling mortgage rates and stable prices will help make homes more affordable for many Americans in 2024. They note this is shaping up to be a very good year for the housing market. So. Uh, We've all been following, I think most of us have been following what's going on with crews, especially as it comes to the roadways around San Francisco. Well, here's a little cruise car for you. 
Cruz is being investigated now by the Department of Justice and the Securities and Exchange Commission. The investigations revolve around the October 2nd incident that left a pedestrian stuck under and then dragged by a Cruz robo-taxi in San Francisco. Now, the GM-backed company was already being investigated by the California DMV and the Public Utilities Commission and the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration as well. So here we go. That's now, a lot of investigations. <laughs> DOJ and the Securities and Exchange Commission. One at a time, everybody, please. I mean, they're all lining up to investigate Cruz, which, by the way, is no longer operating, uh, at least in in California. If not, I think maybe the rest of the country as well. They they they've had a lot of issues as of. Yeah, I don't know. You drag uh, one person to their death and they're all over you to close down your company. I don't get it. I mean, come on, everybody. Calm down. All right. This is a sad situation. The all-time leader in World Cup alpine skiing victories is in the hospital after a crash during a competition in Italy. Video shows 28-year-old American skier Michaela Schifrin lost control before heading into a turn. She smashed into the nets that surround the slope. A social media post by the U.S. ski and snowboard team says she's being evaluated for a left leg injury at a clinic uh, north of Venice. The post says the initial analysis shows her ACL and PCL seem intact. That's good news. The two-time Olympic gold medalist broke the all-time wins record last March, currently has 95 career World Cup victories. A video today showed her she did get up afterward, and she kind of limped down the hill. So... She yeah, is she's... an amazing athlete. Mm-hmm. What they do as downhill skiers is so courageous and requires such tremendous skill and, frankly, favorable favorable conditions from the elements. I mean, in other words, you, you know, you get on an icy course or you get on a course that has visibility, and this is a constant problem. And you have visibilities where you really the, the visibility is zero. You just don't mm-hmm. see what's ahead, and you can have massive accidents and challenges that way i I have i have just incredible respect for her and for everybody who puts those skis on and just points them down the hill crazy crazy sport yeah hopefully the injury is not too severe and she'll be able to compete soon clydesdales are back yep back to the super bowl st louis based anheuser-busch releasing a 15 second video clip teasing the return of the trademark Budweiser draft horses. Yeah, they tease a commercial. Who would have thought? The yeah, beer that's how company, iconic they are. Huh? Yeah. The beer company stopped airing commercials with the horses during the Super Bowl three years ago. They said they wanted at the time to raise awareness about the COVID vaccine along with the Ad Council. That marked the first time in nearly 40 years that the international brewer had skipped the Super Bowl. The teaser video shows the world-famous horses emerging from their stables in a blizzard. The Super Bowl airs, of course, February 7th on CBS, Paramount Plus, and Nickelodeon, where you will be able to see the Clydesdales in all their snowy, icy glory. Yeah, now that they've got the Clydesdales involved, I'm definitely going to watch. Right? Watch the game, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter who's in it, right? Right. No, the Clydesdales Um, really put it over the top. Clydesdales are in it. That's all we care about. This report is sponsored by the amazing people at Tenuta Vineyards in Livermore. The flights of wine worth your time. If you drive out to the winery, you get 10% off just for being a Mark Thompson Show listener. And they have a lot of different wines to taste. They've got 14 reds and 14 whites. And uh, Rich and Nancy are just the nicest people. They also have out at the winery uh, event areas so you can have a small party there you can have a larger party there have a fun place to go visit and check out they also have a lot of events so check out the the website as well uh if you want your 10 percent off you can also order over the phone and if you do it please say smash Smash it with your iron rod you say that it's the phrase that pays yes it is call 925-699-4576 925-699-4576 stock up on your wine get your 10 percent off say hello say smash it with your iron rod and then before you know it your wine arrives on your porch it's quite a thing Tenuta Vineyards in Livermore. Thank you to them for supporting our show. And thanks to you for supporting them because they deserve it. I'm Kim McAllister, and this is The Mark Thompson Show. The Mark Thompson Show. Who's Mark Thompson? 
I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Jada had nothing to do with it. Hey, Mark. It's George Santos here. A lot of people are telling me you're a liar. <laughs> That's pure speculation. We're in better shape, but I don't think we're in wildly better shape. I love it when you're angry. Your Honor, I'd like to ask for a recess. Where are my weed smokers at? What do you think I'm going to say to you? Don't talk to me that way. That was very inappropriate. That's not fake. That's real. Seriously, what the f***? I love it. It was great. I loved it. It was wrong, it was stupid, and I'm trying to be a better person. It's fantastic. Whoever is producing this thing has no idea what they're doing. The science is ridiculous. Right on, everybody. It's our big Friday show. On Fridays, we get to... A segment that we call Friday Fabulous Florida. It's all the news that's collected from that wild state. And joining us every Friday, very generously, because he is someone who's in demand. He does another show called the After Party Live. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here's a fabulous that, producer, yeah, John Daly. Well, that's it. Exactly. He's John <laughs> Daly, everybody. Oh, don't get don't get emotional, Mark. It's okay. <laughs> I am. You, I get choked up when you yeah. come. You know, you've got that uh, After Party Live. We'll do it live. I, I you, can go write it and, and we'll do it live. Do it. Well, I like oh, the well, choice you. of material. I like, wow. you know, the back and forth. What do you call what? that? Chemistry between wow. you and Kim. Yeah. I like it. Coming yeah. from someone with multiple Emmys, that means a lot. Yes, thank you. It's that, fantastic. Very few people appreciate what a compliment from me means, but John is one of them who does appreciate Although it. Although I have to say, you were talking about corruption in San Francisco. I need mm -hmm. to figure out how to get in on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, apparently, apparently it's a crowded elevator of yeah. uh, corruptors. So, um, yeah. I didn't know you had Emmys. You have Emmys? What? God, I don't know. What? I, sometimes I are don't know who I'm attention? working with. <laughs> yeah. I know hey, I you Mark Thompson? Thompson? It's in I, all the text of the, all the, it's, the bio. <laughs> it's it, the, it, have the you research? never read a bio? You've never read my bio. Do you know who I, I mean, am? I, I don't need to kind of a read a bio. Deal. I know yada, you. Yada, yada, yada. Okay. I don't need to. I only I don't read need bios to, I don't need of people to. I don't know. I see. I well, know that's you. A, yeah, but apparently you don't know me. So uh, well, there you go. Uh, Kim, you how are you? We've really uh, been talking uh, up your Emmys that much, which is I, a surprise, to be yeah, honest. Well, uh, oh, my <laughs> God. Wow, did you hear wow. that? I, 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 what? I'm did you hear what she don't said? Hear about that more it's because often. you're yeah. not talking up your Emmys very much, which is a surprise, right, actually. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm in a... Listen to me. I don't want to hear you. <laughs> Thank you, well, Judge. There's Thank some you. room on that shelf for Monday. You got... <laughs> 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 All right. Let's not um, uh, tarry any further. Tarry would be a ding word. Um, let's Why, not uh, delay any longer. Mm -hmm. This is Friday Fabulous Florida. It's time for Friday Fabulous Florida. There is a gigantic alligator in my kitchen. A look at the weirdest stories from our weirdest state. Let's start with a bust. Polk County Sheriff. Uh-oh. Yeah. Is that Grady? Isn't that Grady or not? He's, is, is, he's that, is that County? Grady Albert? All yeah. the, uh, Albert curates are yes, Florida. Second. Yeah, yes. Grady's in charge of Polk County. Yeah. There's a reason <laughs> that this place is fun. That's a Grady. That's it's a Grady his fourth deal. term. Uh, why would you ever elect anyone else? But uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a routine traffic stop they make on this guy. What he's got going here is a situation. <laughs> yes, it turned into a situation, and here's why. Routine traffic stop with this guy. Uh... He hands his driver's license to the cop, and then he gets arrested. Now, what could possibly, it's nothing, no information in the license that got him busted. Like, there's mm -hmm. nothing about his name, nothing about a warrant, nothing like that. Something else, when he handed the license to the cop, that oh. got him busted. Did he hand drug, up with drug a bunch residue. of drugs? Yeah. Drug residue. Drug residue is right. <laughs> It was covered in meth, everybody. Come oh, on. No. It's oh. the most Florida thing ever. Yeah. 
It happened uh, there near Watkins Road in Haines City. And uh, they pull over Robert Brush. He's 46. You see him here. He hands his driver's license over, and there's meth on it. (laughs) They do a quick (laughs) check. As you might imagine, that's something that they are kind of spring-loaded to do. Yeah. And they find not only the meth on the driver's license, they find tucked away between the driver's seat and center console a baggie filled with a large amount of the same substance on the license. (laughs) He can't even argue argue that uh, illegal search or improper search. He actually hands the evidence. He hands the evidence right there. Deliver pizzas. Come on. Oh, it really is a sad fact that he was wrapped up and now he is in police custody. It's a problem when meth gets all over the car, you know? Yeah. You and I really like that gotta... they say routine traffic stop, meaning he gets pulled over every week. <laughs> well, he, uh, he was <laughs> actually he was pulled over because his license wasn't visible, like the driver's yeah. license on the back of the car. I guess that's why they pulled him over. Um, anyway, so that's... I stand corrected. Yeah, yeah, right. Today, he has been arrested over 50 times See? since 1997. So yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean... Yeah. My to Grady's, were, right? uh, yeah. He's putting Joe Box to shame. Joe Box <laughs> and little Anthony. <laughs> Joe Box is a couple of arrests, but uh, yeah. not uh, 50. Why? Florida man is accused of attacking a bus. He was angry. He was <laughs> going to SeaWorld, but they dropped him at Disney World. You can see why that would agitate you. Oh. And he just, this 37-year-old man... Does damage to the bus. He caused five hundred dollars in damage to a Lynx bus. Punched and kicked the front glass door several times, causing it to break. He was arrested, and he's an angry elf. He was picked <laughs> up at the central station, where uh, then they uh, he was asleep. You see, and then uh, the bus driver told him he had to get off the bus because it was the last stop on the bus. But he said no. And he started to yell and curse. And he did get off the bus, of course, but he stayed outside saying that he wanted to go to SeaWorld. And he wasn't at SeaWorld. The bus driver didn't allow him back on the bus. That's when he started punching the front glass door several times, kicked the bottom glass of the front door, causing that to break. Wow. He then started walking toward Buena Vista Drive, where he was later located by deputies at the entrance of Typhoon Lagoon. Ooh. When nothing good goes down at Typhoon Lagoon. He was arrested at the time for criminal mischief, transported to a booking center. But what happened to him ultimately is a good break for him. They decided. What? Yeah, they decided he will not be charged. Why? It it's it's almost as though it was San Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they just decided not to charge him. I thought oh, you were going to no. say they decided to just take him to SeaWorld instead of doing <laughs> yeah. anything. You, know? that would have you have been to the spend thing. the day with the orcas. That's right. They hey, should buddy. have sentenced him to a month at SeaWorld. Hey, you know, buddy, you, we'll you go get, can't go we'll anywhere go get else. Ice cream. We'll get ice cream, buddy. Come on, buddy. Let's go. We'll go yeah, it's house arrest. That house arrest doesn't sound so bad. No, no, no. Let me finish. It's house <laughs> arrest at SeaWorld for the next month. You cannot leave the premises. How do you break windows on a bus and have a general freak out and not face any charges well welcome to america Kim. Oh. welcome to america we let you get away with a lot of stuff here a florida man impersonating a cop uh, he ends up uh being arrested he inadvertently <laughs> this is what i love about this particular iteration of friday fabulous florida albert has these multi-layered things like Ooh. you know again the the guy was pulled over, showed the license, there's meth on the license. So, yeah. right. Guy, in this case, impersonating a cop, that's illegal. But it's not only that, he called 911 on himself. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. He felt he, a little guilty, perhaps. He was arrested. Well, he, rested, uh, he was arrested for impersonating a cop. Uh. He took it upon himself to pull over a reckless driver as a cop, right? <laughs> as a, you know, impersonating a cop. Then he called 911 and he called 911 to come deal with the motorist. Okay. Ooh, it's a wild yeah. idea, but it just might work. 
This he is what uses... happens when you have no training. You see, you can't just pull a, a combative driver over, you know? Yeah. Well, uh, he was a pers- impersonating a little too hard. Yeah. Yeah. That... yeah I'm going to phone this one in. <laughs> I need we backup. Have processes yeah. and protocols and standards. Exactly. You don't give backup to fake cops. So, uh, <laughs> that's right. Call for backup. Wait a minute. <laughs> uh, De- Devontae Thompson, you can see him here. Um, 29 years old. He used his SUV to pull another car over in the parking lot of the uh, TD Bank in Pembroke Pines. It's about 22 miles north of Miami. He uh, justified the stop by showing the driver a stolen badge, which once belonged to a now retired sheriff's deputy in Louisiana. Hmm. He then called 911, telling the operator the motorist need to be st- needed to be stopped because of their reckless driving. Instead, responding officers arrested him for impersonating an officer. He's saying, I just wanted the cops to do their job and get these people off the street. I got in an accident a long time ago. When people just drive recklessly and crazy, I mean, honestly, I mean, I don't want to get this done again, he said. I mean. Yeah, they have um, to hire you before you start doing the job. Yeah, he didn't. He, he should have claimed that. citizen's arrest. Yeah. Yeah, there were a lot of ways besides you calling for backup. Start working on your defense, dude. Yeah, he uh, he didn't quite get uh, the whole plan worked out. He just thought, hey, got a fake badge, got right. an SUV. I'm going to start pulling people over because I've had yeah. enough of this. You know? Ooh, it's a wild idea, but it just might work. It just didn't work. <laughs> a man plays guitar while undergoing brain surgery. Oh, This happened at Coral Gables, Florida. It's pretty impressive. A professional guitar player undergoing brain surgery at a South Florida hospital while playing his guitar at the same time. Christian Nolan underwent an awake craniotomy at the University of Miami's Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center. They say uh, that that's a place that... um, Performs more of these surgeries than anywhere else. 200 cases a year. Look at him. If you're watching on YouTube. Now, they're operating on his brain while he plays the guitar. Don't they need... They need some centers of the brain to be highlighted and used while they're doing the brain surgery. Dr. McAllister is correct about that. It is indeed important sometimes to have the patient awake and able to use the brain that's being operated upon. I got my degree at the University of Google. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps there's um, some way to get it inside the body. The doctor <laughs> said Nolan had a tumor and needed to undergo the procedure. So that's, that's cool. kind of how that a- ended up. And that was, yeah. I mean, it is beyond amazing. Say good thing. That's not fake. Mm. That's yeah, real. Awesome. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. The The science is ridiculous. (laughs) A Florida anger management therapist is arrested. Now we're we're talking. Yeah. (laughs) A Florida anger management therapist is arrested after shooting and killing someone. Are Uh you kidding me? Wow, you don't you suck at your job. Yeah. This is a specialist in anger management arrested after he shot and killed a homeless man. And Albert, I'm unable to open this piece. If there are any other pertinent specifics Uh-oh. that you want to relate, now would be the time to do it. <laughs> Beth says, you know what? You can only take so much. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> I put <laughs> it in it. the private chat, Mark, for uh, uh, a different uh, article. All right. Here for a few more specifics, I'm looking to the private chat, and there is this information. <laughs> you had one job. The uh, the statement from the cops is that officers were dispatched in the morning, 7.06. I always think it's, I, I get it being cranky in the morning, to be honest. Yeah. But I, I've never been cranky enough to kill someone. A suspicious yeah. incident. Kim's like, I the, know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now you get it. Yeah. Uh, these 51 years old, this guy who was shot. The guy you're seeing, I I don't know if Albert's showing this, 46-year-old Travis McBride, charged with first-degree premeditated murder. Wow. Detectives wrote in the report that McBride and Dorsey knew each other, had been engaged in ongoing disputes, and that a woman who had called 911 told cops that McBride came to her door the previous night 
claimed that the homeless man had hurt his dogs. And McBride said he was going to uh, kill the guy. Later, uh, apparently, he, he did. may have done that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, the woman heard around eight to nine gunshots a few hours after McBride showed up at her front door, and she even said that she was a uh, witness to the shooting. Authorities got phone calls once the shooting started, and, and uh, someone was cleaning up the blood because Ooh. apparently he called someone to help him. And this witness also said that they'd seen the same individual lugging a body across the road and stuff into his car before driving away. So oh, he was someone, trying to cover up the crime. Yeah, the same individual as the guy, right, exactly. Mm. So you've got 46-year-old Travis McBride, who, you know, uh, an anger management therapist <laughs> in a really uh, weird twist, couldn't control his own temper. And I mean, for what reason? Because then you go, what do you want to do? Go back to your life teaching anger management classes and the whole time yeah. you just feel like a dirty liar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's, uh, uh, I got it. Ooh, it's a wild <laughs> no. idea, but it just might work. No, it, it, uh, killing people is not. So he calls uh, one it, of his clients. He's like, you want to work out some of that rage? Here, help me uh, drag this yeah, body. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Yeah. I'll give you, um, uh, here's a voucher for some free <laughs> treatments. If you'll just help me move this body. A Florida woman used her aunt's dog's urine for a court mandated drug test. Now that is a wild idea, Ooh, I have to it's say. A wild, wild idea, idea but, but it just might work. That is a wild idea that just might work. Jessica Beatty was charged with urine test fraudulent practices. Do you think she, they're not gonna know? Uh I, apparently she did think that they were not gonna know. Well, it comes back, you're a labradoodle, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's I've got good news. It's clean, but uh, <laughs> yeah. The 42-year-old woman who you see here in kind of a perturbed face. She has RBF for sure. Was previously arrested, released for possession of drug paraphernalia and driving while her license is suspended or revoked and was ordered by the court to uh, take these random drug tests. And then she had a bad one. This just happened um, a handful of days ago. And uh, she readily admitted that she collected urine from her aunt's dog, and that's why the urine didn't uh, kind of track. I think that's uh, Beavis's older sister. It <laughs> does have a Beavis-y kind of uh, feel. John yeah. is not wrong about that. Um, meantime, Fabulous producer, John Daly. Yeah. Gatorland gives a name to the extremely rare leucistic alligator twins. Albert will show them to you. Gatorland is the alligator capital of the world. They announced the names of their two extraordinary and rare alligator editions that have captivated visitors. They announced the first ever leucistic alligators born in human care just last month. They've named them Mystic and Mayhem. They're a rare genetic variation with the American alligator population. That's why they have that pigmentation. You can see it's complete pigment loss, actually. They have pink mm. eyes, complete pigment loss, and they have white coloration with patches of splotches of normal color on their skin. It looks like only one of them is leucocystic. No? Oh. Yeah. Interesting. It is interesting. I don't approve, as you know, of the... Well, I don't approve of a lot, so let's not get into it. Yeah. Um, meantime, in Delray Beach... A mother is arrested, accused of throwing raw chicken at her son and and stabbing him with scissors. What? Mm. Delray Beach cops arresting 69-year-old Michelle Butler for aggravated battery with a deadly weapon. She allegedly threw raw chicken at her son and stabbed him with scissors. Were they not concerned about salmonella? The... <laughs> <laughs> The salmonella is not mentioned among the concerns. Oh, okay. There she is, Michelle Butler, and I'm going to say kind of attractive in her own no. evil. No? Mm -hmm. no. Is that a wig or just a combination of blood and hair? Yeah, I think that Maybe that blood. is just, it's a weird, yeah. It's a, yeah. It's, yeah. No. it's not, look, I'm not saying that this is her best photo. I mean, I wouldn't, you know. She goes I'm to not, Trump's uh, stylist. 
shouldn't I'm be here. I'm gonna need you to raise your bar higher. I yeah. don't think that I like to no. give uh, I like to give scissors throwers a little bit of the benefit of the <laughs> doubt on the on the booking photo. But um, uh, anyway, more about her. Uh, the incident happened at the Citation Club apartments around midnight. They say just a few days ago, this past week. Police responding to a call from the son, and when they got there, the son told officers that she th threw pieces of raw chicken at him, <laughs> and he told her to stop doing that. And then they began arguing. She lunged toward him with scissors. Yeah. I might have led with the scissors when I'm talking to the cops as opposed to she threw raw chicken. I mean, but I get it. He was trying to explain the context of the argument. Anyway, the cops... Uh, arrested her. Apparently, she uh, did um, get him. She cut the shin of his right leg. It caused him to lose a significant amount of blood, according to the police. And her son did say that she slipped and fell two times, hit her head on the edge of the living room table. So that might be what that is a little bit uh, in, oh. in her booking photo. You had yeah. a little bit of blood up there. I think that's what that is. She kind of looks like early caveman's wife. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. She has some... Uh, yeah, cro magnon kind of thing going on there. True. Anyway, John, John says she's the Cro-Magnon. best looking. Sorry, John says she's the best looking scissor stabbing mom I ever saw. <laughs> you have that cro magnon je ne sais quoi. Yes, the you arouse the animal in me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go clubbing. <laughs> All right, it's time to pick a favorite. Nobody likes to do it, but we have oh, to. The bylaws of the show require it. Yeah. What are the choices in the chat, please, Albert? We have happiest place on earth in quotes uh, needed an anger needed anger management. I mis made a mistake there. Surgery shredding and uh, not a routine traffic stop slash fake cops. Oh, that's, that's a very good that. variety, I might say, of choices you have in the live chat. If you're watching in replay, most people do watch in replay. Please indicate in the comments your favorite. We always go back and look to see what people's favorite that might be. This is a list of what you've just heard because you can lose it in the mayhem and arrests and the scissors swinging a routine traffic stop turns into a drug bus when the driver hands his officer who stopped him his driver's license with meth on it mm. a florida man accused of attacking a bus for dropping him off at disney world instead of sea world he <laughs> will not be charged the florida man impersonating a cop because he wanted the cops to just do their job and get these crazies off the street, he himself was arrested for impersonating the cop after he called 911. The man playing guitar while undergoing brain surgery at the Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center. The Florida anger management therapist arrested after shooting and killing a homeless man. The Florida woman using her aunt's dog's urine for court-mandated drug test. Gatorland, giving names to the extremely rare leucistic alligator twins. And finally, the Delray Beach mother arrested, accused of throwing raw chicken at the son and stabbing him with scissors. It's like picking between children, trying to choose a favorite that you love the most. But alas, we must do it. I ask you, fabulous producer John Daly. Fabulous producer John Daly. I like Beavis' sister's urine test, but I think I have to go with anger management because I don't think we've ever seen anything like it before. I do think it's... There's never, There's been, never anything been anything like this. Like this. In the category. <laughs> how about you, Kim? What do you like? What's your favorite? You know, Kim, how are you? That little, little loose assistic white baby gator was pretty cute. Uh-huh. But I have to go with driver's license covered with meth. No, oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Driver's license covered with meth. It has it all, right? <laughs> yeah, it really does. It has the meth. It has somebody stupid enough to give the cop a it's license the with the meth kiss, on it. You know, the chef's kiss of meth right there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not just talking trace amounts. We're talking that had to be covered in it with that the yeah. officer looked at it and went, okay, yeah, I got to run a test on this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, Powdered donut? No. <laughs> no. Albert, uh, how about you? Uh, you're the curator of Friday Fabulous Florida. What's your favorite of the list that we just uh, Albert, heard? Albert, thank you. I like the guy who was mad that he got dropped off at Disney World. I just want to imagine how he got so mad. Like maybe he was looking forward all week to going to SeaWorld. Maybe he didn't have the mm. budget to get to Disney World. Maybe that's what tipped him off. I don't know. But it was, uh, it's funny because it's like sea, it's SeaWorld like, versus Disney World. It's, it's not a comparison. But yes. Yeah, man. Uh, well, 
There are no right answers. Mm. Uh, but the right there, answer is the guy who gave him the driver's license with the yeah. Mets. So that is uh, really a great group. Albert, you outdid yourself. It'll be hard yeah, to hard to match this next week. That's Friday, Fabulous Florida for today. This has been Friday, Fabulous Florida. There is a gigantic alligator in my kitchen. Y'all come back now, here. Yeah? You can find John Daly on the After Party Live, and he does a great job with that show. It airs after this show live on the After Party Live well, channel. Good yeah, so I check him out there. John, appreciate you being here. We you love can find you. me at City Hall. I'll be checking out the corruption. <laughs> the corruption at City Hall. John yeah. wants a piece of it. Who can blame him? Who can blame him? That uh, City Hall, either L.A. or San Francisco. They're getting uh, there. Either one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of corruption going on. <laughs> The Mark Thompson Show. I look forward to Fridays because I can talk to a guy who really knows politics. He's forgotten more about politics than most of us will ever know. You know him from his covering of the Trump rallies, of covering the Iowa caucus, the New Hampshire primaries. He's an epic politics man. He's Michael Shore, everybody. Hey. Hello, sir. How are you? Wow. What an amazing week to see the quiet part said out loud, which is essentially on the border crisis, which has been tied to the Ukraine funding. And you can you know, characterize this any way you want, Michael Shore, but to hear GOP senators and Congress people acknowledge the fact that they are trying to not solve the problem, in a sense. I mean, that's really what it is. Of the yeah, board, well, I mean, I, without we, because because they don't want it because Donald Trump is saying don't solve it, don't address it because I want to be able to run on it to beat Joe Biden. Yeah, which is something we said a week before those senators uh, said it out loud. Uh, we we talked about it here. I mean, it's it's pure, unadulterated, and um, and and naked uh, American politics in an election year. Uh, th- th- this is an issue that almost. Um, with near unanimity, the people that I speak to, at, uh, at you know at Trump rallies and and in covering these uh, elections, they all say that the number one issue to them is the border, and how we have open borders and we have, and, and these are in states like New Hampshire and Iowa. These are not border states; they border Minnesota and Vermont. So it, it's it's not. Um, it, it's not something that you would think would be there, but Trump knows and his people know that this is the single issue that scares them the most. It's also, I think we can say, um, there are underlying factors. It's not because of jobs entirely. Let's put it that way. Now, what do you mean by that? Um, uh, meaning that, that I'm sure uh, in my travels uh, that I there are a lot of people that look at it as a race issue um, as much as they do, and if not more, uh, but they're able to cover it in jobs. And um, and the fact that, you know, many of them think that crime is coming across the border in droves, that these are criminals, um, not just because of the fact they're breaking U.S. law by coming in illegally, but by, by the fact that these are criminals that are coming to the United States. They were criminals before they crossed the border. So that that message has been successfully communicated sufficiently anyway. That's when I say successfully, yeah. uh, such that people are voting on it, even though that's a misconception. I mean, it's clear we have a border crisis. It's, I think it's fair to say there's a huge issue at the border, but, yeah. uh, but you're saying some of these attendant uh, specifics just, you know, are, it's just yeah, messaging, I, I, political there, messaging. There, there's a disconnect between what they say about several issues, not this, and what is really fact, and and that has been a key to the success of of Donald Trump for now for you know eight or nine years. Uh, this is oh, here's from Lori. She's always got something interesting to say. Lori says this should be a major Biden ad and Lincoln Project video. Trump saying that he wants to keep the border problem unsolved to help him get elected. He is willing to prolong your suffering for his own purposes. It's interesting how that's true. Uh, you need to message around it. I don't know. I think you can. Um, 
your thoughts on that? I mean, getting that word out there. And the word is out there. It's on. It's it's in every newscast that I that I. It, I, it I is. Uh, look, you're not going to change his base, right? His base right. is what it is, and they'll believe whatever it is that he says. Um, and and they will if they if they doubt it or if they have problems with it, they'll find other reasons to support him. But but on on this issue alone, Democrats are going to have to find a way to, and Biden specifically is going to have to find a way to talk about and to get people to believe that it's Republican standing in the way of progress on the border. And there, we just need a little more evidence. It's also a little early, but I, I, I'm not, I, what, what Lori, is, is that her name? Lori yeah. um, is, is saying is, is true, right? I mean, uh, they have to take this and find a way to show uh, that the other side is being disingenuous. Of course, um, you're not going to find it blatantly, and there are not a lot of people who are going to go on interview shows and say precisely what you said at the top here, that, oh, yeah, well, we're doing this because Donald Trump doesn't want us to solve the problem. Uh, they're saying that they don't like the deal enough and they don't want to tie it. Their excuse is they don't want to tie it to Ukraine, aid, uh, which is their buyout of, of voting for border um security so uh, there, there will also be something that comes out well there won't be nothing that comes out of congress uh and democrats have to be able to way find a way to talk about that as they go forward yeah you're right they don't go on interview shows and say it in fact it was leaked from a closed door meeting with mitch mcconnell and other gop leaders yeah but but what, that- what's no. What helps Democrats is that Democrats believe, too, that there is a problem on the border. And if they see Republicans stymieing any kind of effort to make things better there, uh, I, I would say Democrats and independents are going to see right through that, that Democrats don't need to. But they, there is there, there is Democratic unrest, certainly, over the fact that there is that there, you know, it's a perceived problem on the border. It is a problem. It's magnified, of course, by the talk. Uh, and and it's it's going to be something uh, that's going to be talked about for quite a while. Uh, Stymieing, I will ding, and uh, disingenuous, I'll ding. Uh, That was a question that was good. Do you want to put it back up there, whoever? Uh, Why can't Biden override with executive order? The Republicans, uh, why can't they be overridden by the president to make a border deal? Michael, could you speak Uh, to that? Well, he can do that. I mean, uh, I I think, you know, one thing you have to remember about Joe Biden is that he is, uh, this is something that Mike Johnson asked him to do around Christmas time, right? To use executive action uh, to to stop migration. Um, and Mike Johnson, the speaker, uh, he, he can, but he's also a student of the Senate and likes to th- see things get done the way they need to get done. But uh, in point of fact, this is something that he can, that the president can do uh, and in, in, and, and get full credit for it. So it's not like it's a lost cause getting anything done on the border. Um, they have to exhaust every other method when you're a part of the Biden team. Uh, you have to respect Congress as much as you can say, because that's what's in his blood as a as a uh, as a politician. Yeah, he's an institutionalist on some level. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, uh, it, it makes sense. Like he's a he's a, a product of the institution. He spent sure, his, sure. most of his life in the Senate. He likes the Senate. He likes the way it works, even though it's slow. Uh, he doesn't have a, a, a big problem with that. So I do think that there will that there's a chance that that could happen. What happened to the money that Mexico gave us to pay for the wall? Is that going into government coffers or? Uh... You know, I, I I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I, but, uh, I, it's remarkable that that is just skipped over. In fact, you know, just to the point of executive order and appropriating money, remember you need Congress to appropriate funds like for immigration judges, and you need many more immigration judges at the border, obviously, and that's part yeah. of the plan. Uh, you can't do it without Congress. Uh, Trump did go around congressional uh uh, mandate. They went out. He went out uh, uh, around congressional appropriations yeah. for the for the for the border wall money. Right? There was yeah. no Mexico. Mexico's not paying for anything. He went on, into the Pentagon and just took it. I mean, it, it's. It, I mean, it's true. Uh, it's uh, and that's something that he did. Uh, and it he's was, not the institutionalist. Of, I guess is my point. Says, that uh, no, no, I was going to say yeah. he's not the institutionalist, and because of what it was. It was undone with the stroke of a pen, right? I mean, so by 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 an incoming president, I think Biden looks at Senate action, congressional action, in a way that there's some permanence to it, and at least a way to um, to see it through with support. You know, executive action is always uh, greeted. Um, 
with skepticism by the Congress, uh, and and there are problems that go along with it. They forget them pretty quickly because it is what it is, and once it's done, there's not much to fight about with it. But if Biden shows some kind of uh, moxie on this issue and does use executive action, which he may, uh, it's a way for him to own the issue, which is why some Republicans are, are uh, uncomfortable with the way that they've sort of pulled back any kind of border uh, support because of Trump. When it comes to money, though, he needs Congress for that, doesn't he, Michael? Well, he does need Congress for money. I, election year, it becomes a little less important. It's Congress that needs to figure out its own budgeting. Um, so I, the, the president's less reliant on Congress there, but they can make big problems for him on other issues and and on the border too. I mean, you know, if you do the executive action and, you know, there are lawsuits or there, there are problems with it to some degree, uh, it becomes a, a, a sort of an albatross for a president or it can become. I don't think in this case it would. I think this is sort of, you know, pretty bare uh, election year politics. And if he were to do some kind of executive action showing that he's a, a president who wants to do things even in the wake of uh, or in the face of Republican um, pushback, then that could probably help him on this issue uh, with independent voters, which is really where we are. And and uh, again, uh, this, this election is probably going to start pretty soon. And you're going to hear a lot about the border from one side. You're going to hear about uh, abortion on the other side and the economy on the other side. Biden's going to be running on the economy. So it remains to be seen how important a moment like we're talking about will become. But let me tell you what is happening and is still getting the headlines and continues to be, I mean, potentially a constitutional crisis is, is related to the border. What's happening in Texas, and I mentioned in the first hour that I would talk to you about this, is essentially the governor there, Greg Abbott, is uh, – asking the Texas National Guard to continue to use this concertina wire, this barbed wire that goes up. And the uh, Supreme Court said that uh, it's, it's, not, it's a federal situation at the border. It's not a state situation at the border. Right. But, and and, yeah, and one of the options here, and what but people like Joaquin Castro and others are saying, that it's time for the president to take over the Texas National Guard, which as commander in chief, he is able to do. Um, I, I don't <clears throat> I don't see and I wouldn't know, frankly, if they are poised to do something like that. I certainly nobody has said to me and, and none of the people that I've spoken to have said anything about that. I haven't spoken to anyone at the White House for a couple of months, actually. But but I do know that there is um, there is a movement uh, among Texas Democrats um, among, and people in Colin Allred's campaign who's running against Ted Cruz, uh, people who want to see um, the president do something on this to kind of take it over. Because as you mentioned, this is a federal issue, not a state issue. So the political hay that's being made of this is uh, predictable on some level. Abbott saying you know, I need you, the federal government and President Biden. Uh, here it is. Uh, President Biden has violated his oath to faithfully execute immigration laws enacted by Congress. Instead of prosecuting immigrants for the federal crime of illegal entry, President Biden has sent his lawyers into federal courts to sue Texas for taking action to secure the border. Right. Yeah, and and, saying, and yeah. he doesn't even need to. If, if court fails, he can federalize the Texas National Guard. And then you're, you know, I, he doesn't want to do that. There's nobody who wants him to do that except the people who are saying they want him to do it. But there's no one on his side because it creates a whole new problem and a whole new distraction for the Oh, president. my God. Exactly my point. I mean, it becomes a political rallying point. It already is in other states with Republicans who have nothing to do, as you just sort of noted along the way here, that, you know, you were, you were hearing about this border issue in states that, that, don't, that aren't on the border, that don't have uh, right. something in all of this, no skin in that game. you got Phil Scott of Vermont um, supporting Abbott's move. Uh, the Republican Governors Association saying that they are backing Abbott's methods and utilizing every tool and strategy, including razor wire fences, to secure the border. So this becomes a media rallying place. It's very visual. You've got Fox News Channel down there. You're only going to hear about I mean, you've got you've got all the networks down there. But I'm saying there's a political hay being made on the right. There is. is but at a certain point, the Democrats have to realize that this is an issue that is not 
political uh, entirely, right? I mean, they, or they have to pick apart the parts that aren't political, which is, it is a huge strain on the state of Texas. It is a huge strain on the state of Arizona and the state of California. Uh, it doesn't have to be handled the way Abbott is handling it, certainly, and he's certainly um, making it worse and bringing attention to himself and scoring political points. But uh, doing something about what's going on down there and attending to it is something that voters want to see happen. Uh, and it's voters of every stripe, really. Um, That's and, right. I mean, it's a legit issue. Yeah. I mean, th those communities are being stressed immensely by yeah. illegal immigration. It is that is uh, that is a fair and important point that that you make. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah. to that end, they're going to you know, it's not like they're giving up on it. Right. I mean, they're going to be addressing it, addressing it in the way Greg Abbott wants to by by bringing in the National Guard on a federal issue is is not going to be acceptable to a lot of Democrats. And you know, the president, whether or not he, he deputizes or federalizes uh, the, the Texas National Guard remains to be seen. But there's going to be some kind of intervention. Michael, turning to what's happening in the presidential race uh, with Trump, and pulling those strings that we talked about uh, for you know border policy and not making a deal and um, by the way I saw one thing before I leave it uh, this is I thought it was from Beth she was essentially saying this uh, uh, let me just find it it was thought it was I thought it was a it was an interesting provocative um, notion and I've heard it elsewhere um, the idea somehow I can't seem to locate it now but uh, the idea somehow that uh, Trump wants no border deal because the border deal is linked to Ukraine money and he doesn't want money going to Ukraine because he's doing the, here it is, uh, the bidding of, uh, this is Trump's way to throttle the Ukrainians for Putin, okay? I know this is the, two, I mean, the 3D chess of it. Well, it is the 3D chess. I happen to respect Beth's belief. I don't agree with it because I I don't think that that's where this sophistication is happening. I don't think it is. is a, I, I think what's going on in the basic tenets of Trump's election are going to be America first. Right. And and when you look at America first, you're going to look at protecting the border from people who are not American. You're going to look at keeping money in America to fix the problems of America. This is what Republicans are going to do. Uh, so keeping money out of Ukraine is is part of that. It's going to get a little trickier when it comes to Israel um, and, and the money going to Israel. When I ask a lot of these voters at these Trump rallies if they agree with sending money to Israel and Ukraine, many of them, not all of them, make a, a, a a delineation between Israel is okay and Ukraine is not. And I don't think it's in deference to Putin. I think that it's in, in criticism of Zelensky and where that money is going and how it's unaccounted for. They want transparency, transparency. I don't know if that's just a, a code word for it's okay to give to Israel, but it's not to Ukraine because I, I just don't think th at this point we're at the, we want to help Vladimir Putin out part of things. I think it's we want to help Donald Trump out. And Donald Trump is helped by having immigration and the border be a, a, a premier issue in the 2024 presidential. Yeah, I think Donald Trump uh, wants to help Donald Trump out, too. I mean, I think Donald Trump that's just wants saying, to win. Yeah. Right, right, right. No, right. No, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. I'm saying okay, Donald you're talking Trump. about Trump. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so, Michael, uh, respects your connection, Beth, but uh, doesn't necessarily see the connection. Uh, now to Nikki Haley quickly. She hauled in a uh, million dollars in donations since Trump essentially threatened, there was a warning yeah. from the former president directed to GOP donors to stop funding Nikki Haley. And he said, anybody that makes a contribution to bird brain is what he called her from this moment forth will be permanently barred from the MAGA camp. We don't want them and will not accept them because we put America first and always will in caps. Um, so being banned from the MAGA camp, you know, that's, um, I don't know, discounts on MAGA merch, you're going to be, that's going to be gone and all of the privileges that accrue to you being in MAGA camp. But yeah. look, being on the wrong side of Donald Trump, he, he's recriminatory. He's, he's vengeful, you know, uh, but Nikki Haley is fundraising off of that. Do you get dinged? Uh, I do, uh, for recriminatory. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, I think that um, I think that 
you're seeing what we know about Donald Trump in play. Donald Trump does not want somebody else out there criticizing him anymore. Uh, he knows it's going to come from Biden and he doesn't want to come from the home team. He's tired of it. It's getting under his skin. I think Biden's getting under his skin. I think Haley talking about his um, his cognitive decline, and I'm talking about Trump's cognitive decline, is something that he wants nothing to do with. He wants to own that issue against the president, as he has. But look, the election has started. Uh, Joe Biden has acknowledged that Donald Trump is the presumptive nominee. Having Nikki Haley in there is like having a surrogate for Joe Biden. Uh, and and going after Donald Trump constantly is is important to, to his uh, campaign as well. And that's why Trump wants to stop Haley at all costs. I think we can probably toss out any flirtation with, with Nikki Haley as his running mate as well because of all of this. But I, I don't... You know, I, I, I don't see a path for Nikki Haley. That said, I, I know that the anti-Trump part, a faction of the Republican Party wants very badly for someone else to stay in there and go after Trump as long as possible. I love that you say you don't see a path because I want to now get to the 3D chess of Nikki Haley, which I think, as I've said before in the show, and I, you know, I think you'd agree, people run for president for many different reasons and wanting to be president is literally just one of the reasons. It's not the top yeah. reason sometimes. Uh, the notion that Mickey Haley is sort of burnishing her brand for another run in, you know, 2028, it seems to yeah. me maybe one reason that she's continuing in the race. Yeah. I mean, lots of people run the first time and don't win, right? It's very rare that you run the first time as, as a somewhat somewhat unknown quantity nationally and do well. You do it to get your name out there for the next time. I mean, and accidentally, you know, Barack Obama accidentally won the nomination. That was what he was doing. He was going to serve out his Senate term, run for president and get his name um, there for the next time. And, and it was, sometimes it does work. It's not going to work with Nikki Haley, at least as of right now, and at least until something changes with the status of Donald Trump. But this is probably what she's doing. She probably thinks that she would be a good president. She's been a governor. Governors make, you know, capable presidents for the most part. And and so I, I think that that when you uh, look at what her point is, it's to point out that we are in a bad position in the Republican Party now because this is who our standard bearer is. And I want to fight it as long as I can. After South Carolina, if she gets vanquished in, in South Carolina, it's going to be tough to make that argument. Uh, ask my, we're just running out of time here, but, uh, John, so, oh, this is about being thrown out of MAGA camp. If you support it, ask Michael what the MAGA camps are like. Uh, you've been closer to MAGA than, you know, probably well, any other reporter. You know, yeah. You put all I've, never these camped, I've never camped with them. Um, <laughs> I, I no, I've been, I've been out with them a lot. I've, you know, I spent 15 months on the road with Donald Trump in 2015, 16, and I've been, you know, out there immersed with just his campaign and outside of his events a lot recently. Uh, they, they see that he can do no wrong. There are very few people whose support of Trump is lukewarm, but again, I, it remains to be seen whether MAGA camps can increase their enrollment. And that, that seems like a tall order. I, I, there, there's not a huge number. There, I'm sure there are people who have warmed to Trump since he's been gone or since Biden's been in office, but he's not someone who has attracted a lot of new support over the time he was president and in his post-presidency. Uh, whether people go back to him or not, it, it remains to be seen, but there's certainly, you don't feel that online at a Trump event. In honor of Jim Avila, we'll uh, just... Enough. There's always been, in this country, 30 to 35 percent idiots. <laughs> right. Uh, Who, uh, who's, who's that guy? That's Jim Avila, uh, your old partner. Your old, uh, I mean, you know, partner. Oh, yeah, this, I, I, to I, I totally remember him. In this segment. <laughs> now yeah, you get it? <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah, once somebody is uh, not on, you know, sharing the mic with Michael, he, he, they're dead to him. Yeah, exactly. Uh, can't come to yeah, short fall. <laughs> uh, Michael, uh, love your visit with us. Thank you for being here. Quick word about the Niners. They are laying Go. seven uh, on the... Uh, I think it's up to seven and a half even. Uh, as you know, Mark, never bet for or yeah. against 49ers. But um, but uh, let's hope that they win. Uh, Debo's going to be back. And, uh, you know, they should... 
I would hope be able to beat the Detroit Lions and that uh, run defense that is suspect and the pass defense, which is good, but still I think uh, Brock Purdy can be surgical with and, and go Niners. Wow. Uh, like a politician, the uh, political analyst offers a, an equivocal uh, in terms of picking a winner take, but his heart so cleanly in the Niners camp. It is. And if you support the Lions, you were banned from Shore Camp from, as well. From Shore Camp. Wow. Yeah, you were, you're yeah. picking a, up a page from the uh, yeah. from the Trump playbook. Uh, yeah, Michael cool Shore, thank you. Uh, go Niners. See you, my friend. The Mark Thompson Show. Smash the like button like a boss. Smash it. Smash it with your iron rod. Let's do a turbo news and then Snyder joins the culture blaster. Albert, commissioner, do you have anything for me? No, I uh, completely agree with Michael with, uh, with, with the everything analysis. he said and the Niners and the Niners. Yeah. Yeah. Albert, thank oh, you. Oh, and everything else he said. Wow, that's a full yeah. endorsement of all of his yeah. utterances. Well, very impressive. Um, Kim? Yes. Your news. You yeah, will do Kim, it. How are you? Little turbo version. And then uh, we'll get to Snyder, who will join us in a moment as well. Smash the like button for Kim. Don't do it for me. Do it for no. Kim. Woohoo! Smash it right now. You know what? Do it for me. Uh, what the hell with Kim? <laughs> the Mark Thompson Show. See, this is how he is. Fickle with praise. One minute he loves you, the next minute you never know. This report is sponsored by Coachella Valley Coffee. Something big going on in Placer County, where the Sheriff's Department is on the scene after an officer-involved shooting that happened this morning. On social media, they describe the situation as a critical incident which unfolded at the Olympic Village Inn at Palisades. The Tahoe Area Ski Resort is now stable, they say, but a large law enforcement presence remains out there. Few details are available about the actual incident, but authorities say the shooting involved a California State Parks police officer. Olympic Valley Inn is a timeshare hotel just about a mile away from the main lodge. Palisades officials say they're neighboring resort is open as usual. So if you're headed up to ski this weekend, the ski resort is open. But again, at the Olympic Village Inn, this is unfolding. It is now up to a jury to decide how much, if any, amount of money former President Trump will pay to E. Jean Carroll for defamation. A separate jury found Trump liable for sexual abuse last year, and Carroll is seeking $24 million in damages. The former president stormed out of the courtroom earlier today during closing arguments by Carroll's attorney. The judge reportedly told Trump's attorney she's on the verge of spending some time in lockup for violating rules of evidence. This thing just keeps going. We talked about this a little bit yesterday, but this death row inmate in Alabama has died following the nation's first execution by nitrogen hypoxia last night. Kenneth Eugene Smith had been sentenced to death for a 1988 murder. He lived through a, a botched 2022 execution attempt where they couldn't find a vein. His attorney unsuccessfully attempted to block this execution, even though Smith himself had been the one that, that requested this new method be used. The International Court of Justice has stopped short of uh, ordering a total ceasefire, but is telling Israel that it must prevent acts of genocide. The United Nations top court issued its initial ruling today on South Africa's claim that Israel is committing genocide in Gaza. Uh, the court also ordered Israel to take provisional measures like allowing humanitarian aid to reach Palestinians. A government economic agency is showing prices easing as 2023 came to a close. The Bureau of Economic Analysis releasing December's Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index, which showed inflation held steady at 2.6% for the year. Experts say the reading makes it more likely that the Federal Reserve will start cutting interest rates later in the year. Well, Green fees have a whole new meaning at a Fresno golf club. <laughs> the city attorney's office says the city and state officials raided the AOA private membership golf club near the Fresno airport. 
they found more than people just working on their putting. <laughs> Inside an <laughs> inconspicuous looking warehouse was a thriving illegal pot business. Oh! The only sign visible from the street says private members only. Where are my weed smokers at? <laughs> How about you know not, where they're, they not, they're not smoking. They're growing. Oh, they're at the Fresno Golf Club. Fresno Has anybody been a weed? Yeah. Fresno officials say the unregulated sales happening there mean the state isn't getting their cut of fees and taxes, but they say it could also be dangerous because without normal checks and balances, there are yeah. worries that drugs may be laced with fentanyl or other dangerous substances. Sure, of no course. Yeah, processes made. and protocols and standards. Exactly. The investigation continues, but you know, they're now taking all the fun away from the Fresno. Albert, you're a golf big club. golfer. You don't think that maybe on one of your golf courses there might be a, a grow house nearby? That would be pretty cool. Grow house? Like on the turn? Yeah. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. cool. <laughs> I mean, you'll have a more chill back nine. Depends uh, on how you It's playing. fantastic. Yeah, right. It would definitely be a, be a sweet. You'd never mark. finish is the problem. You'd be looking for your ball the whole time. You'd never That's get off true. the course. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Something happening at Sea Ranch. You know where Sea Ranch is? It's this little community on the Sonoma County coast. Well, the post office there is inundated with packages after Amazon suddenly stopped delivering to homes. Last week, Carrie Anderson, who's the local postmaster in Sea Ranch, was told that Amazon will discontinue home deliveries. Instead, she was told that it would be dropping off all packages at the Sea Ranch post office. Oh. No, my. no, no. Oh, that is bad. But Anderson says, well, well, wait a minute. We don't have room for that here. This is a little teeny tiny post office, people. We can't yeah. do it. Yeah, well, they're doing it anyway. They're not equipped to handle so many packages, but they have received more than 200 packages a day since Amazon stopped delivering. That's a lot for them. Uh, Thursday, Amazon said cutting off home deliveries in Sea Ranch was a mistake. They announced it's a mistake. I'm sorry. My bad. They announced they are working with the United States Postal Service to correct it. Wow. So, yeah. Man, can't that's do a, that. Yeah, that's a lot of packages. That is a little friendly. Too many for, for a small place like that. Yeah, it's a great job. I have a busy week. <laughs> yeah, you do with those packages. <laughs> this report is sponsored by Coachella Valley Coffee. I'm drinking it right now. I am drinking my tea too. So good. This I got is a, a whole place pot to get going inside me. Yeah, know, the tea is real. I was thinking of you last night because the tea is such a big part of Coachella Valley Coffee. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they um, have a big tea part of that website too, even though it's, it's delicious. Coffee company, um, yeah. I'm out of my uh, my mint tea, my Moroccan mint, and my other mint. My uh, what's the other one? Ginger. Time mint. to time to reload. I'm going to have to use my Mark T at checkout and get my ten percent off. Got to do it. It lasts for a while. It's such a nice way to treat yourself, and I call it a little bit of heaven in my Stanley Cup. That's oh, right. I love it. <laughs> so you find a huge selection of coffees and amazing teas at CoachellaValleyCoffee.com. And then when you're at checkout and you're paying 10 bucks for your tea or however much for your coffee, you put in Mark T and mm -hmm. boom, you see the money slide right off your total. You get 10% off, off kid. Anything on the site. You want to get merch. You want to get a t-shirt. You want yep. to get tea. You want to get coffee. You want to get a subscription. 10% off at checkout. Mark T. Subscription. They just send you every month a different yeah. tea. Or yeah, I think you can get, get every month or even every two months, however you want to do it. And I, there's a discount associated with that as well. Do you get so. to choose what you want them to send you? Of course. You? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. You can just subscribe. Yeah. But uh, it's cool. Knock around the website. They got all kinds of stuff. CoachellaValleyCoffee.com. Enjoy the good stuff. I'm Kim oh, McAllister. Yes. Yeah, this is The Mark Thompson Show. The Mark Thompson Show. Jada had nothing to do with it. I completely disagree. Person, woman, man, camera, TV. And this is their new hopes. Why are you yelling? You do not know what you are talking about. It was great. I loved it. Listen to me. I don't want to hear you. Saudi Arabia pays cash. It was wrong, it was stupid, and I'm trying to be a better person. Hey, Mark. 
It's George Santos here. A lot of people are telling me you're a liar. Seriously, what the f***? Oh, yeah, it's Friday. I'm feeling good. I'm all jacked up with my Coachella Valley coffee. I'm really so grateful for those of you who have joined this week, Patreon and PayPal supporters. You can find our Patreon and PayPal through our website, themarkthompsonshow.com. Elise Inzario. Is that how you say it, Elise? How about a $20 super sticker? Big shout Big out. Big shout out. She might do the Americanized Inzarillo. Elise Inzario or Elise Inzarillo. Either way, Elise, we love you. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. But I am going to read your note, which is, this is for Kim's tea replenishment. That $20 oh, super sticker. Wow. That. That is, that's so nice. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's very really sweet. <laughs> and Kathleen Bryant, how about a 20? Big shout out. Another super sticker. Thank you, Kathleen. Yay. It really helps. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Even when we're demonetized, which they will do, we get all of your super sticker and super chat support. So thank you. All oh, of that Doug. does go to the show. Doug Coke. Yeah. What's up, Doug? Thank you so much, thank Doug. Thank you so much. Yes. Doug Coke, I don't believe, is one of the Coke brothers, just to be clear about that. I mean, it's the same name. And I'm sure he's been answering that question, maybe even getting upgrades in certain situations because he's tied to a wealthy family. But they are, you know, he's, it's been a burden for him because it, I, I'm guessing he's um, he leans lib. But I, you know, would lean anti-Coke a little bit. Anyway, I appreciate his uh, support. He's a very active Big in the shout chat out. and very active as a supporter. Big shout out. Uh, Pinky, thank you. Friday Fabulous Florida. Big shout out. Hope you enjoyed it. It's there for you to share. And Spencer, Trump is too crazy, says uh, Spencer in his Big uh, shout out. super chat. Love the donors, and Ricky yeah. agrees. Really do appreciate everybody who supports thank us. Uh, thank you so very much. Hugs to the donors, says Gordon. Very true. Uh, we're a little behind, so I can't read a lot of the comments that I'd like to, but I will put a few aside, and I will respond to them next week. Uh, right now, Albert, with uh, your blessing, I'd like to move to Mr. Snyder. Can I do that? You are blessed. Are any other... Yep. All right. Uh, on Fridays, we like to check in on uh, movies, on streaming. We do it with a guy who writes about music, streaming, movies. He is amazing when it comes to the art community. How he does it all, I do not know. You can read many of his things, his musings, his reflections, his reviews in the Marina Times. On social media, he's called the Culture Blaster. He comes and goes on a rainbow. How about it for Michael Snyder, everybody? Michael, welcome. I'm excited to have you in the studio. Well, you know, in solidarity with Texas Governor Greg Abbott, I have erected a barbed wire fence between me and Mark here in the studio. <laughs> Very well done. You know, safety first, Mark. I, I can't. Yeah, you don't want me crossing. What? Oh, no, no. I, right. I have guards on my side of the fence, too, by the way. Okay. Courtney is armed. <laughs> this right. will not. This will not go unnoticed, I'll oh, tell you. Wow. I okay, if I seem a little hungover... It's probably due to celebrating Burns Night last night. It has nothing to do with Jay Montgomery Burns from The Simpsons, mm -hmm. but I celebrated along with my Scottish friends. And for those who don't know, uh, it's a holiday in Scotland honoring the greatest Scots poet, Robert Burns. So, you know. Look at you, Mr. Sophisticate. Haggis and whiskey, baby. Wow. <laughs> yeah, any excuse to uh, step up to the bar for you, huh? Hardy, hardy. Yeah. Uh, by the way, contrary to popular belief, I did not steal Mark's luggage off that cruise ship. Oh, my God. I have a story to tell about the luggage that I'll tell on Monday. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, yeah, the missing bags have not been sent to me, but I did contact Celebrity Cruises on your behalf, Mark, uh -oh. and convinced them to send me a large box of prawns and cocktail sauce packed in dry <laughs> ice from the ship's buffet. <laughs> and going on that, you were absolutely right. The quality of onboard dining there is impressive. Yes, they, if they, only their return of the luggage is as impressive as the, uh, as the buffet. Uh, it's 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 a shameful horrifying. shameful yes. um speaking of shameful yes um, let's get right to your reviews yeah, i mean no, to I, the movies that how, you're how about mcshaneful uh the uh. great uh, Ian McShane of uh, John Wick. He's Winston. Of course. Uh, in the John Wick movies. In Deadwood, he was a major villain. In Game of Thrones, he had a major role. And he's so good in so many other notable projects. So, uh oh, it sounds like you didn't like you don't like no, him in this no, one. No, 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 no. McShane. 
Playing an aging but skilled assassin at the end of his deadly career is the biggest asset of the quietly effective oh. noirish thriller American Star, which, contrary to its title, uh, does not involve any American to speak of. The title actually refers to the name of a rusting cruise ship that is halfway sunk in the ocean waters near a beach on Forta Ventura, a minor vacation destination that's one of the Canary Islands off the uh, Moroccan coast. I think they're connected to Spain in some manner. Yes. Uh, anyway, Forta Ventura uh, serves as the movie's setting. Uh, it's where McShane's British ex-military man turned, uh, you know, killer, um, Wilson, <laughs> yeah. uh, is slated uh, to take out his final target. Uh, it's a conceit that doesn't seem that original. Yeah, there's always that. This is my last. This yeah. is my last I, one. Yeah. My last job. My last hit. Whatever. But all right. But while waiting for the man to turn up, the guy he's supposed to kill, Wilson encounters a cute young bartender named Gloria. Oh. And she's played by the able and charismatic French actress and singer Nora Arnazade. Oh. And uh, she, uh, I believe that's how you pronounce her name. And they uh, end up. Uh, well. Uh, uh, she's a little young for him. Gloria, lunch that there's alcohol in. Well, well, there well, might be a little alcohol. There is she some is a drinking. bartender, so I would think yeah, that she might. is. Gloria knows the island, All right. and she seems like a good diversion. So mm -hmm. Wilson kills time with her instead of killing the guy he's nah, been assigned to take it. out, right, okay. since the target has yet to, re uh, to return to Puerto Ventura. Uh, so it's Gloria who tells him about the shipwreck and whether or not the symbolism is fuzzy. In the movie, Wilson becomes fascinated with the American star, the Rusted Hulk. Okay. Um, directed by Gonzalo Lopez Gallego from a very spare script by Nacho Ferna, the movie is well shot. It's helped by the somewhat exotic locale. I never even heard of Puerto Ventura before. Um, and but you say it like you know it. Well, well. you know, I, I prepare for these things. Yes. Mark. Okay. Very good. Uh, and and um, I have to say, there is terrific. Supporting work by Fanny Ardant, one of France's most esteemed leading ladies, here playing Gloria's mother, and by Adam de Gattis, uh as an associate of Winston's. And, and though it meanders a little, it does pay off in the final act. Oh. And again, McShane is compelling in whatever he does. American Star is in select theaters. It's middling noir. You know, I, I, I enjoyed it, but I love that kind of stuff. I'll uh, watch old French film noir. I'll, I sure. Mean, you know, but You're I like a noir a, guy. I like a conflicted anti hero as much as right. the next guy. So. Oh, this is good. I like a lot of the elements, even if they're not completely fresh. I'm looking, I, I oddly find myself interested in this film. I what think, else do you have? I think you would enjoy it. Um, okay. Although Daisy Ridley has been impactful in prestige dramas, including Ophelia, where she plays Hamlet's quote-unquote love interest, and The Marsh King's Daughter, where she plays the title character. She's best known for playing Rey, Luke Skywalker's Jedi Knight protege in the recent Star Wars trilogy, which may be why I was so surprised to see her as the lead in Sometimes I Think About Dying, a low-key character study about a timid office worker named Fran who lives in an overcast small town on the coast of Oregon and toils away uh, on spreadsheets in her cubicle, rarely interacting with her fellow employees. And despite the gig that she has, it's a solitary life. I mean, there is, she's forced to interact with some of the people in the office. Um, and she loses herself in her job, and she also loses herself in surreal and somewhat morbid dreams. And it, it's quite a ways away from Ridley's more high-profile, high-energy roles. So things slowly change for Fran after the arrival of a friendly new employee in the office. This quiet man named Robert takes a shine to Fran and reaches out to her. And though it might be scary or against her better judgment, Fran may lower her guard and actually interact with Robert in some capacity or not. And that is the essence of Sometimes I Think About Dying, which was apparently based on a play, but absolutely benefits from the lovely atmospheric Pacific Northwest uh, exteriors that serve as a backdrop when Fran is out of the office. Yes, it's a little on the modest and minor side, but it's kind of fascinating to watch Ridley's Fran slowly stir in response to the tentative attempts by Dave Marajay's uh, Robert uh, to break down her defenses. Uh, director Rachel Lambert gets very real and heartfelt performances out of her cast, even the most uh, minor throwaway of them. And to be honest, 
that there is no great sweeping romance here, just a little Just the story. tension, just the tension. I mean, yeah. the, the dynamic between them. Is that what right. you're saying, it's, Michael? It's Zion? a little story about the inner lives, fears, and foibles of ordinary people uh, that may move you in unexpected ways. Yeah, foibles uh, is a day. Yeah, Go ahead. Well, yeah. there you have it. It's also in select theaters. Great. Like what else do you have, Michael Snyder? Well, let's move on to, you know, you know I'm feeling... I'm feeling kind of uh, like we need something big, something no. important. No. And I have a movie that's gotten some Oscar recognition. Okay. Um, or at least, you There's, know. It's, it's in the in, buzz, is it? It's in the conversation. All right. And I just caught up to it. And you can see it, if you like, on Netflix. A much bigger deal than the two previous movies, insofar as it has been getting some legit awards nominations. Society of the Snow is a remarkable, powerful, and finely wrought docudrama about a very well-known event, and that would be the 1972 plane crash in the Andes Mountains oh, sure. that stranded members of a Uruguayan rugby team and a few other passengers. Wrought is a ding word. Those who didn't die in the accident. Uh, in a remote and treacherous place, hell, the middle of the Andes, uh, that forced the survivors to take what I will call extreme measures in order to stay alive. <laughs> You'll call it that? I will. I don't think anybody would call it that. Okay. They had to cannibalize each hey, other, Michael. What's thanks. wrong with you? Spoiler alert. Come and on, speaking it's, of been, spoiling, it's, been, it's the most reported, uh, I know. written speaking about. Of, speaking of spoiling, good thing it was so cold up there. Anyway, um, the incident and its aftermath have already, yeah, <laughs> have already inspired a very well-regarded English language motion picture, 1993's Alive, which, by the way, starred Ethan Hawke as a member of the rugby team. And you reviewed that positively back many years ago. I probably did if I was reviewing films back at the age of seven. <laughs> anyway, uh, directed and co-written by Spain's J.A. Bayona. Yeah, J.A. Bayona, whose movies The Orphanage, The Impossible, and A Monster Calls have proven his knack for telling a genuine genuinely exciting and often chilling tale, Society of the Snow is in some notable ways an improvement over Alive, beyond the fact that it's primarily in Spanish. Um, that language aspect, the use of actors who are relatively unknown in the U.S., and the massive leaps in special effects technology since 1993 all give Society of the Snow a realness and a you-are-there quality that enhance the viewing experience. Uh, it's equal parts riveting and harrowing, whether you know the uh, situation and the outcome of the actual crash or not. Uh, there are some graphic and horrific elements that some might find disturbing, but none of that is gratuitous. Bayona goes for the uh, emotional core of what happened, uh, the losses suffered, uh, and the hard decisions that were faced by those who didn't perish when the plane went down, but who were desperate to survive. Yeah, I mean, it was a, an awful thing, and they faced excruciating decisions. Absolutely. And harrowing, I'm being told, is a ding word. Of All course right. it is. A Society of the Snow is a triumph of filmmaking about a triumph over impossible odds. Wow, it's, he likes it. It's in select theaters? No, it's on Netflix. I like it. I, I've got Netflix. I can watch it. It's in, they, they probably played theaters to qualify for, you know, I Oscars, see, for and, Oscars yeah. and such. It's in Espanol, or there's a lot of Espanol? See, see, so you're going to have to do a little reading bueno, unless you bueno. speak the language. I know you speak a, a no, Spanish I'm to a an poquito, extent. poquito, but I don't, I don't know. Poco, Maybe, poco. Yeah. Mocha, mocha, mocha. Hey, speaking of mocha, oh man, have you ever had Coachella Valley coffee with a little shot of cocoa? Oh, oh yes. so good. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's continue uh, on a little foreign bent here, All if right. we can. Uh, we get finally to The Crime Is Mine, a very droll post-feminist uh, homage to yeah. 1930s homage. screwball comedy, French style, from Francis Francois Ozon. Uh, a cinema provocateur, director, and screenwriter uh, who's at home with uh, modern interpersonal drama and also flamboyant tributes to classic movies. Flamboyant. Ozon's filmography yep. includes Swimming Pool, Eight Women, Young and Beautiful, Summer of 85, and other favorites of mine and my fellow Francophile film buffs. Mm -hmm. And uh, in addition to its shaggy dog plotting, uh, plotting, over-the-top uh, dialogue, candy-colored Art Deco look, and generally frothy vibe, The Crime is Mine, known, by the way, in France as Mon Crime, uh -huh. um, has some rising and renowned French actors and actresses. You in, do speak French, I should tell I everybody. Do. Uh, oui, je parle français. Uh, these, these folks are in full romp mode. Uh, relative newcomer, uh, Nadja, uh, Therese... Uh, Wow, what's it? Tereskowitz, uh is kind of a cutie pie wannabe actress mm -hmm. and an accused murderess, Madeline. 
Uh, Rebecca Martyr is her a fledgling lawyer and roommate, Pauline. And among the big guns, Isabel Huppert plays a has-been silent film star, and she is clearly having a ball doing this. And one of my favorite French actors, Fabrice Lucchini, plays a corrupt and inept judge. I mean, true to their lofty pedigrees, Huppert and Lucchini are particularly amusing, and they, like I said, seem to be having a blast as Ozon puts them through their paces. Uh, though The Crime is Mine is not what you might call laugh-out-loud funny. It's a lively friendly farce with a certain je ne sais quoi uh, that I found like totally charming and entertaining. In fact, I had a smile on my face for much of the movie. How shall I put this? A mon crime est pour moi un très bon film. Uh, for you, yes, The pour Crime moi. is Mine is a very good movie. Yes. Uh, uh, well, it's so much fun. Uh, it's available for streaming on various platforms, including wow. Amazon Prime, uh, Voodoo, and Google+. I'm told Plus. that we must ding Francophile, so I will. Okay, go I, ahead. I, it's so gratuitous. Would you gratuitous is, okay. you're right. We should have done it. Uh, okay. Uh, well, let's go to TV land. What do let's you Let's do some TV, Michael. We only have another minute or so. Okay, so Echo, which uh, finished its uh, five-episode run on Hulu and Disney Plus a couple weeks ago, in its entirety for binging, mm -hmm. was... Uh, Definitely worth my time. A gritty, serialized addition to the Marvel Cinematic Universe on the TV side, with Alakwa Cox reprising her role as the deaf, one-legged Choctaw, wow. Maya Lopez, who is the adopted niece of Vincent D'Onofrio's now signature character, Wilson Fisk, the kingpin of Manhattan crime Do I Lords. need to see anything before I see Echo I, to know I it, or can so. I just it, jump it, in? It, it wouldn't hurt, but this guy is Daredevil's arch em uh, nemesis, uh, the kingpin, and I have said this before. This character is maybe the greatest character that D'Onofrio has, uh, has ever had a chance to play. He's played him over a, a series of Daredevil uh, TV shows. And the first season of Daredevil, now available on uh, Disney+, Plus, is huh? an absolute banger and highly recommended. You may want to watch that first, and it okay. is worth your time. Uh, it's very gritty street level, despite being part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, the TV branch of it. Uh, so there's lots of well interwoven Native American aspects to Maya's backstory uh, and powers and an impressive selection of Native American actors in significant roles. Echo is really effective and satisfying, uh, a self-contained tale that has connections to previous and upcoming Marvel projects, if you care, even though it works as a standalone oh, and good. the representational aspects are organic and necessary to the story. Uh, you know, I just want to wrap up with one quick thing here. Uh, lessons in chemistry. People uh, suggested I should cover it a few weeks ago in the chats, and I am sorry, folks. I, I don't look at the chats while we're on air, so I can't really immediately He likes his, his reviews to be pure, everyone, not influenced by the chat. Well, Go anyway, uh, it's on Apple TV. Lessons in chemistry features Brie Larson, and she is exceptional as the star of this smart, amusing, and decidedly feminist series about a woman scientist in the 1950s who is in essence told to stay in the kitchen by the American patriarchal society of the day. And Ugh. she ends up hosting a cooking show on the fledgling medium of television and uses her forum to educate her viewers beyond just teaching kitchen skills. But it's a long road from being a talented chemist to where she ends up. And there's so much more to this than just the simple bare That's bones. That's terrific. Patriarchal there. is a dang word. I uh, love go, this. This was so good. Wow. Yeah, it's a terrific yeah. show. Yeah. I'm reading the book right now. I like the series so much. I'm reading the wow, book. Wow, yeah. Kim, how are you, Kim? Very uh, yeah. committed to it. You know, as as a as you know, a comic book reading, animation loving, superhero enduring guy. Yeah. I also want to quickly say on Disney Plus, Doctor Who uh, is. You uh, love the Doctor Who I, series. I do, and it's it's back. Uh, with the 15th Doctor, this is a character that gets recast, uh, and they have a convenient plot mode to do this, which is that he is killed and regenerates as a different character. And they did a different sort of regeneration uh, to bring us uh, Shudi Gatwa, who is the first black, and he, he's an out gay uh, actor, first black Doctor. Um, and he's teaming with Millie Gibson, uh, a young actress uh, well known to British TV lovers, uh, as the 13th, uh, the 15th Doctor and his companion, Ruby Sun. Day and longtime 
uh, showrunner who brought the show back from uh, basically the brink. Uh, Russell T. Davies has returned as showrunner after a number of years and head writer. Uh, and there are three specials available on Disney Plus with the great David Tennant as the doctor. He was the beloved 10th doctor and he regenerated as the 14th. Wow. And, and Catherine Tate, the comedic actress, as his once and returning companion, Donna Noble. This is so much fun. There's four episodes on Disney Plus, the three specials and the Christmas special that introduced Shudi Gatwa. And I love the stuff. I highly recommend everything we've discussed uh, in the TV realm just now. You really did uh, give us a boatload. Remember, Kim, when we had the guy who brought Doctor Who to American television. It was going to be a Fox series. Do you recall this? We had him on. No, I don't remember. The great uh, Matthew Jacobs, who I <laughs> count oh my among God. my Kim, friends. how are you? I can't believe Kim he's, doesn't remember we this had is this is also, guy by the way, he's the guy who uh, created um, The Emperor's New Groove for Disney he, and worked oh, for he's the, the young, real thing, man. young Indiana Jones Chronicles. But he thought it would be big on fox they gave him the green light he yep. wrote the, wrote the and, and ended up getting through any number of circumstances got show you should go back and find that segment kim it premiered maybe you'd like it, it premiered against the roseanne series it, finale exactly good it luck was, in the ratings right it, it, you know you realize so much goes <laughs> on besides just being a good show doctor who he likes the latest iteration find it on disney plus lessons in chemistry brie larson is exceptional and it is terrific, recommended by our chat, many of the people who watch and listen to the show, and Michael agrees with you all. Echo is the one-legged deaf heroine of this, is uh, uh, a, Maya. A martial arts whiz, despite the, what she's dealing with, and yeah. played by a, a Native American who is actually deaf and an amputee. Of course, because you cannot now, you got to cast everybody, you got to scratch your liberal itch <laughs> a, a lot with Echo. Cox, she's, a, she's a discovery, she pays. L maybe see the first season of Daredevil, he says, if you want, uh, which is really excellent if you want to watch it before, but you don't absolutely need to. The Crime is Mine is a comedy romp. It's frothy. It's Frenchy. He loved it. <laughs> it's like a croissant in the morning. Society of the Snow is remarkable. It's real, authentic. The selling, uh, the, the, the retelling, I should say, of the story of the soccer team that went down in the Andes it's on Netflix, and it is excellent, according to Michael. Sometimes I Think About Dying is the smaller film that somehow crawled inside of Michael's cranium. Daisy Ridley plays Fran, the cubicle-dwelling lead in this thing, and she gets into a relationship. We don't know if it's romantic or exactly what happens. Some kind of tension develops romantic or otherwise between her and a co-worker who would like very much to connect with her it is called sometimes i think about dying and it's in theaters american star is the ian mcshane offering it's a vehicle it's a vehicle for ian and he says ian mcshane is good in fact he thinks american star is mcgood it's and, mcgood yes. yeah and it has a lot of the elements that you may have seen in film before but it has ian mcshane and it also has great performances across the board. So he says it's it's solid. Again, not right. over the moon for it, but he very much likes it. Michael, you've you've done it all. But before you leave, please, as a diehard Niners fan, give me a sense of what you expect this weekend. If Debo Samuel can play, I have no worries. I do believe it's going to be a shootout at the Levi Corral. I have a funny feeling about it one way or the other. I know it's tough for... Um, uh, for any of us to be prognosticators, especially after what we saw in the rain last week, but I believe Brock Purdy will be yeah, on point. Uh, I think it's a dry field, and he's got so many weapons. And I, I but know. Goff himself can be good on a dry on a dry surface. But but let's point one thing out: the Detroit Lions the have played for Detroit, yeah. primarily in a, in, dome, in a dome indoors, yeah. and this is uh, the first time in weeks that they've played outdoors. All right. So well, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm no, rooting we'll for my 49ers. I, I want them to get back to the big bowl. Uh, you know, 2024 20, revenge tour. It's going to be either <laughs> the Ravens or the Chiefs, and the Niners need it, revenge on those teams. A lot of vengeance. He comes and goes on a rainbow. Michael, we love seeing you. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody, and go Niners. Go Niners. 
Mark Thompson Show. What am I doing, Albert? I can't believe it. How? Where is the time gone? I just don't know what happens sometimes. Work so hard. We've done a lot today. Culture Blaster. We have Michael Shore with some insights of the border. We're going to talk more about that next week. We had Friday Fabulous Florida, which was really very fabulous. We put the fabulous in Friday Fabulous Florida. Well done, Kamish. Kim's news was spectacular as always. Your news is hitting uh, another level. Wow. All right. I think it's challenging the rest of us to step the rest of the show up to your news level. Yeah. Yeah. So. Big week ahead, Monday, a special guest joins us in the Crime Corner. Yeah, the True Crime Corner gets a guest. So don't miss that. I'm Shadow Stevens for the Mark Johnson Show. Bye-bye. A famous writer, crime writer, joins us on Monday for True Crime Corner. Oh, After Party Live. Have a good weekend. Go Niners. Bye-bye.